Hello and welcome to this video where we will look at using a lookup formula to return multiple values. And then how can we combine those returned values into a single cell and even change their sort order. Now in this video, the demonstration will be in Microsoft 365. So we will be taking advantage of some of the latest formulas available to us. I will, however, be releasing another video in a couple of days to show techniques that work in all versions of Excel. But let's crack on with this first one. So in this example, we have a table named products. And in cell G2, I can see that one of the categories is currently in that cell. And in that cell, I have a drop down list where I could choose a different category, such as cakes and pastries. When that happens, we would like to return all of the values that relate to that category from cell G5 and down. So let's quickly look at using the filter function here. So in cell G5, I can type equals filter. This is one of the new functions available to us in Microsoft 365. It is a lookup formula that returns multiple values. So it is or can be quite easy to use in a simple example like we will do right now. And then we'll push it a little bit further by combining these answers into one cell. Now, if you are new to the filter function, there is a link in the description of this video and in a card that should be showing on the video right now where you can learn a lot more about this function. It can easily handle multiple conditions if you so require in your lookup. We're going to keep this one quite simple, though. So the array to return is going to be the products. Let me select that table column. I'll put in my comma and then we just put in the condition, which is if the category column, let me click on that, is equal to the category entered in cell G2. And that's all I need to worry about. I'm not going to specify a response for the if empty argument. I'm just going to close off the bracket here and run that and not spend too much time talking about filter. Not in this video anyway. But we could have pushed that much harder with extra conditions or extra options. So as we can see, if this is what we wanted, then it's working fantastic. I can change the category from cakes and pastries to food, and now we have the food products, or change it to beverages, and now we have the beverage products. But, Let's imagine that's not what we're after. We want a list of all of the categories and then all the products for that category. So let's continue with the same sheet. I'm going to hide the column that I just worked on. And in column H here, let me quickly set the scene by copying these two headers. And I'll just change that to products. And let's make that a slightly different color. I do like to use different colors. So first of all, we want a list of all of the categories. Now let's keep this nice and quick. I'm going to use the sort function followed by unique here to quickly provide a list without duplicates, a distinct list, and also to have that in order. Let me select my categories and put in my two close brackets. Going through that side of things quite fast because this is not the focus of this video. I now have my unique list in A to Z order. And what is the focus is working with these products. So we're going to use the filter again like before, but instead of returning the spill of all of the values, we want to combine them in one cell. So let's start by putting in the filter function. So filter to return the products, comma. If the condition is that the category is equal to 
the category mentioned. So I'll click on cell H3, close off the bracket, ignoring that last argument again. And let's run this for the moment. So just like before, we get those spilled results. And they're not currently in order either. I can see beer three from the end and coffee second down. So let's take care of that next. Coming back to the origin cell, because the formula only lives in that cell, I will add the sort function around what we have. We don't need to go into any extra arguments here. Just a standard sort, we'll put it into A to Z order on that single column that we're returning. And now we have that in the correct order. Beer and coffee at the top. Now we're going to combine them into one cell. So back to the origin formula again. And the function we want now is the brilliant text join. When you're joining multiple values like we are right now, it's much more efficient than concatenate, one that is much more familiar to Excel users. We are going to see that function doing this job though in the upcoming video that works across all versions because text join was only released in Excel 2019. So text join asks you for the delimiter up front and what I would like to use is a comma space. So I'll include that in the quotes. We can of course add any delimiter we wish. It could be a hyphen or a slash maybe. A comma asks if I'm interested in ignoring empty cells or not. This is not something I am really too bothered by in this example, so I can actually ignore it. Just put in a comma, we'll ignore it. We could have also answered it. The default response is true, and it would ignore spaces. And then we have the option for text one, and the answer to that is the results that we have from our lookup. So if I come to the end and put a closed bracket, press enter, that's what we're after. Multiple values returned and then combined into one cell. I can copy this down to the other categories in this list. And there we have it. Let me resize that column. A lookup formula returning multiple values and all combined into one cell. And also ordered. So filter and text join together, absolutely fantastic. Now I want to show one more example that pushes it a little bit further. We have another sheet here, and what we have are some individuals, and then they are choosing the location that they would like to attend some kind of event. They get to choose three options with a priority. What is their favored location, their second favored, and then their third. So we're going to begin by quickly creating a sorted and distinct list, just like we did previously. Cell F2, let's get straight to it, equals sort, unique, and I'll select that name column. We have a table here named TBL options. Let's two close brackets and run that, and we have that spilled array. We now want to return the options, and in this example, we're returning the three options into three separate columns. So we're not going to combine them into one cell like before, we would like them in separate columns. We also have the task of ordering them by the priority specified by the individual. And what makes it an extra challenge for us this time is that we're sorting the locations by a different column. So we want to sort them by the option column in ascending order, one, two, three. So this is interesting. Let's get to it, cell G2. Let's begin with our simple filter function example. We are returning the location, comma, and that is dependent on if the name is equal to the name specified, starting from F2 here. So this is not really any different to what we did on the other sheet. It's just a different data set. If I close bracket enter, 
we're getting something similar. Here we have the option spilled, and if we look at Adam, we can see that Cambridge was actually his third choice. So it shouldn't be showing as the first option, it should be showing as the third option. And then we can see that Harlow is actually the first choice for Adam, so that should be at the top. We also want to transpose it into the different columns. Now I think I'll tackle the sorting first. So coming back to the origin cell, we are going to use the sort by function. So we have sort and sort by in Microsoft 365 and Excel Online. And the great thing about sort by is that we can sort an array by a different corresponding range or array. So for sort by here, the array we're sorting is the results of the filter function. Let me come to the end and put in our comma, but then we get asked for by array. So what array is it being sorted by? Now we can't just select the options column because we're returning three results. So I can't just select 27 options. What we're going to have to do is filter that as well. So let me quickly put in another filter to filter the options for that individual. So now I'm returning the options, comma, if the name is equal to the name. So a filter function very similar to the previous one. One of them is returning the values that we want to see, the locations, and the other one is returning the corresponding array for the sorting. So that's what we're sorting it by. We do not need to specify anything else because we are looking for the default ascending order. If I close that off and press enter, excellent. Harlow number one, London number two, Cambridge number three for Adam. We can now simply go back and add a transpose. We could do text join if you did want to combine it into one cell. But for this last example, I'm throwing in transpose. We'll just wrap that around what we have. So it transposes it into the different columns. We can then drag that down, fill it down to the bottom. And there we have it, separate arrays there for each name. All of them ordered by the individual's choice. So this video saw a few examples of how we can use a lookup formula in Microsoft 365, and the obvious choice for that is filter. That's why it's here. It is a lookup formula that can, one, handle intensive conditions if you need to, and two, it returns multiple results. But then how can we add to that to refine the returned results? Because we don't always want it spilled over multiple rows. How can we combine it into a single cell or single row? I hope you found that video useful. Please subscribe to receive a notification of the latest videos at this channel. Take care and I will see you again soon.